In this video, we'll look into the passageways, for the cranial nerves, and important blood vessels. First, they will be scanned from anterior end to posterior end. Then at the end of this video, we are going to see a summary. From the inside, the base of skull can be divided, into the anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, and posterior cranial fossa. The anterior cranial fossa is, where the frontal lobes of the brain sit in. The fossa is formed, by the frontal bone, ethmoid bone, and sphenoid bone. The orbital plate of the frontal bone, separates the anterior cranial fossa, and the orbit. The orbital plate of the frontal bone is convex. The cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone separates the anterior cranial fossa and the nasal cavity. Through the foramina in the cribriform plate, the nerve endings of the olfactory nerves pass from the nasal mucosa. In the midline on the cribriform plate, the crystal galley of the ethmoid bone projects upwards. The posterior ethmoidal canal opens at posterolateral side of the cribriform plate for the posterior ethmoidal nerve and posterior ethmoidal vessels. For the articulation with the frontal bone, the sphenoid projects the lesser wings. Between the lesser wings, a prechiasmatic sulcus runs transversely. The optic chiasma sits on the sulcus. The posterior boundary of the lesser wing is on the posterior boundary of the anterior cranial fossa. At the medial end of the lesser wing is the anterior clinoid process. The optic canal in the root of the clinoid process is for the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery. The bones in the middle cranial fossa are the sphenoid bone, and temporal bones. The middle cranial fossa is, where the temporal lobes sit on. Anteriorly it is bounded by the lesser wing, and greater wing of the sphenoid. Posteriorly it is bounded by the ridge of the petrous part of temporal bone. Laterally it is bounded by the squamous part of the temporal bone, and the greater wing of the sphenoid. Medially it is bounded by the sphenoid body. The superior orbital fissure is, between the lesser wing greater wing, and the sphenoid body. Through the superior orbital fissure, the oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve, 
and obtusens nerve, can be found. In addition, the lacrimal branch, frontal branch, and nasociliary branch, of the ophthalmic nerve, which is the first division of the trigeminal nerve, pass the fissure. The body of sphenoid bone, between the middle cranial fossae in both sides, has the pituitary fossa, or hypophysial fossa. Another name for this fossa is, cella tersica, because the anatomists thought that, it looked like a saddle, from Turkey. The pituitary fossa is for the pituitary gland, or hypophysis. The fossa can be approached from the nasal cavity. Through the sphenoid air cells, in the sphenoid body. The bony tubercle, at the anterior border of the cella, is called the tuberculum celli which is just behind the prechiasmatic sulcus. The posterior boundary of the cella, is called dorsum celli, which expands as the posterior clinoid processes, at its superelatoral angles. In the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, we can find three major foramina. The foramen rotundum is below the superior orbital fissure. Through this foramen, the maxillary nerve, which is the second division of the trigeminal nerve, can reach the trigopalatine fossa, between the greater wing, and maxilla. The foramen oval is behind the foramen rotundum. Through this foramen, the mandibular nerve, which is the third division of the trigeminal nerve, can reach the infratemporal fossa. Very postlateral to the foramen oval is the foramen spinosum for the middle meningeal vessels. The foramen lacerum is actually a gap filled with the fibrocartilage. It's at the medial tip of the petrous part of the temporal bone between the sphenoid bone and occipital bone. The internal carotid artery from the neck can enter the cranium through the carotid foramen, carotid canal and the foramen lacerum. The bones in the posterior cranial fossa are, the sphenoid, temporal bone, and occipital bone. The fossa is for the cerebellum, bones, and medulla oblongata. The fossa is bounded by the dorsum celli, body of the sphenoid bone, cleavers of the occipital bone, petrous part of the temporal bone, mastoid part of the temporal bone, candler part of the occipital bone, and the squamous part of the occipital bone. The clevis is a slope between the cella tersica and foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is for the lower end of the medulla oblongata, which is continuous with the spinal cord below. Next to the internal occipital protuberance, the groove for transverse sinus, which is for the collection of the venous blood from the brain, can be seen.
The groove is continuous with the sigmoid groove, which leads to the jugular foramen, where the internal jugular vein begins. The accessory nerve, vagus nerve, and glossopharyngeal nerve, also can be found in the jugular foramen. The jugular tubercle is medial to the jugular foramen. The hypoglossal canal, which is for the hypoglossal nerve, can be seen inferior to the tubercle. In the posterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone, we can see the internal acoustic mattis, for the facial nerve, vestibular cochlear nerve, and nervous intermedius. In this video, you've seen the passageways for the 12 cranial nerves. The first cranial nerve, or olfactory nerve, uses the foramina of cribriform plate. The second cranial nerve, or optic nerve, uses the optic canal. The third cranial nerve, or oculomotor nerve, uses the superior orbital fissure. The fourth cranial nerve, or trochlear nerve, uses the superior orbital fissure, too. The fifth cranial nerve, or trigeminal nerve, has three divisions which use the superior orbital fissure. Foramen rotundum and foramen oval. The sixth cranial nerve, or obducens nerve, uses the superior orbital fissure. The seventh cranial nerve, or facial nerve, uses the internal acoustic mattis. The eighth cranial nerve, or vestibular cochlear nerve, uses the internal acoustic mattis, too. The ninth cranial nerve, or glossopharyngeal nerve, uses the jugular foramen. The tenth cranial nerve, or vagus nerve, uses the jugular foramen, too. The eleventh cranial nerve, or accessory nerve, also uses the jugular foramen. The twelfth cranial nerve, or hypoglossal nerve, uses the hypoglossal canal.